How do I like the number 20? Ah, it's not my favorite. I won't even say it's top 10. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Muttley. Muttley Crew? <laughs> no, just Muttley. Muttley. And this here is Frank, who is wise today. I believe that is a Harry Potter shirt. Yes. Um, Harry Potter on HBO Max. You can see Harry Potter Return to Hogwarts, which is um, a 20th anniversary uh, special. Yeah. Where J.K. Rowling is not invited. Have you seen it? No. Oh, I just heard, heard headlines. All of the old cast and crew is back together, but J.K. Rowling. With Wonder her, why? She has a lot of those um, hot takes that people are not are saying. Oh, okay. You, we don't like that anymore. Hmm. And so I think Harry Potter, the movie people, are trying to be like, hey, we're our own thing. She just wrote the book. So in this reunion tour, this is the reunion about the movie, not Daniel the book. Radcliffe yeah. and uh, Emma Watson, not so much. Harry Potter and Hermione Granger. The anniversary of the first movie, which was? The name of the first movie? Mm -hmm. The Sorcerer's Stone, yeah. but the book was called The Philosopher's Stone. Oh, really? I don't know how where it got changed, because mm -hmm. I think you can also get the books that say Sorcerer's Stone, but I'm pretty sure it was originally The Philosopher's Stone. Oh, okay. But Philosopher maybe sounded too literal. Yeah, it doesn't sound as fun for, for moviegoers. Yeah, and it doesn't have that, like, wizardy yes aspect mm -hmm. to it right or it's like this is a wizard movie not a philosophy movie right who knows um yesterday i was laughing i, I was like doing that <laughs> laugh uh, and that I was said, the one thing i didn't look up i was literally I, I skipped past it and i was like i heard it playing i'm like should i look that cat up and i'm like she didn't really give me enough and i don't i didn't it. give you enough and also i tried to look it up later and i think i'm all confused that's why i was muttly today because muttly is a cartoon dog that makes that sound oh so i just uh, smedley was a cat but he didn't make the sound so i don't know what's going on so i'm just muttley muttley but it's the 20th anniversary of or muttley no of that show we just talked about harry potter yeah oh. uh it's the 20th Ooh, okay of january oh nice you know me, one twenty 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 two. <laughs> one using <laughs> you just like binary Anything. binary codes. Yeah, I just I, any way I can make it ones and twos. One twenty twenty, um, and it is starting Aquarius season. Shout out all you Aquariuses. Aquarius, what is the Aquarius? It's uh, it's a mermaid tail, right? No, no. Aqua. It's water. a water bearer. Oh. Holding the two jugs? Yeah. Mm. No, I, I'm getting mixed up because what's the other water thing? Maybe that's Virgo? No, the two jugs is Virgo, isn't it? Or Libra. Libra, the scales. I don't know. Aquarius is the water bearer, but it's an air sign. So it's oh. a little confusing. Aquarius is an air sign? Aquarius is an air sign. We still have never had our Zodiac podcast. In the Zodiac podcast. Um, Did we? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Um, you're right, Aqua means water aqua pa is the pennsylvania water De or is it philadelphia water department um aquarius is a mystical healer who bestows water or life water meaning life water the on, source of life on land um but it also <laughs> um so the water bear is supposed to give knowledge to the world and is known to be stubborn if you know any aquariuses are they stubborn I don't think I know any Aquariuses. Um, I knew some, you know, friends growing up. Aquarius. Bridget Corey might be an Aquarius. Pretty sure. Yeah, because she's not a Pisces. Okay. Aquarius starts today, but it just brings us to the number 20. How do you like it? How do I like the number 20? Ah, it's not my favorite. I won't even say it's top 10. <laughs> <laughs> number 20 is the top 10 <laughs> uh, no I, yeah i don't think it would be a top 10 at all i'm gonna go as far as say i don't like the number 20 oh yeah i'm gonna say it no like the number 20 and i'll get further into detail would yeah, you like so, 20 dollars what i'd like you know <laughs> 23 more um nothing's good about the number 20 so the number Such 10 strong feelings yeah. out of the blue out of the blue the number 10 right is like the first complete set of numbers 
1 through 10. Yeah. Then 20 is just repeating that. So it doesn't get like me excited for like you started a new chapter. Once you get to 30, I like the number 3. You know, 23 is my favorite number. I like my, the number 3. Yeah. And so each number between 1 and 0 are special in their own right. Oh, I love them. 1 through each 10. Each number between 1 and 0. <laughs> yes. There's a thing called imaginary numbers in, uh, in mathematics. You're mathable. But no, between 1 and 10, they're all good numbers. Mm -hmm. And so after that, you can like 11, like the ring at 12. And then when you get in the 20s, 21. Hey, blackjack, 22. <laughs> and then well, I guess once again, once you get to 30, then you like the 3 in the 0. As for 20? Yeah. No, because actually I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say in my ranking system 1 through 10, Two's not that high, so it's not even like the two zero. Oh, I like, no, and it's twenty twenty two. What are you gonna do all year? Well, I like twenty two. Like I, I, I don't know about you. Don't you. Like I'm twos. Feeling, what? <laughs> you just said you don't like twos by itself. Oh, I guess twenty two. I should hate. <laughs> no, but twenty two. I, I like the, I like the, uh, the alliteration. I like twenty two, thirty three, forty four. Oh yeah, yeah the, the eleven times table. Eleven that. times tables. Eleven is who didn't record. succeed in the eleven times table? Oh right, your your special eleven. I number. do love my eleven. So. I am going to say that 20, the number, is my least favorite number. It's a, a group, uh, let's say, a 20, a group of 20 units is referred to as a score. Oh, so four score? Four score means 80. Wait, four score and how many years ago? Four score, I don't know. I thought it was four score and 20 years ago. Well, it, it, here it says four score means 80. Yeah. Um, we're referring to the Emancipation Proclamation. Yes. Um, but it can also mean an indefinite number. Like if they say scores of typhoon survivors f were flown to Manila. So it's just like a bunch. Scores of people. Um, it's also the number of moves um, required to optimally solve a Rubik's Cube. In the worst case... What's that mean? 20 is the in, number in, of moves. In, in the most scrambled Rubik's Cube. Oh, okay. So, like, sometimes you might get a lucky break. Yeah. So, how many numbers is it? I don't know. 20 is the number of moves, quarter or half turns, required to optimally solve a Rubik's Cube. Just 20? Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Whoa, I almost got the whole blue side. You almost did. Um, did you know that uh, in many disciplines of developmental psychology, adulthood starts at 20? In developmental society? Psychology. I can see that. Yeah. We live in America and they say it's 18. Well, developmental society. Not development. Yeah, it would be legal, right? Legal society says, deems that's what an adult is. The Bible Age 20 is the age at which the the Levites in the time of King David were allowed to do the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Um, that's one Chronicles. And also the Levites from the age of 20 upwards were assigned to oversee the work of the house of the Lord. Ezra 3, 8. So the Bible seems to think that as well. Mm -hmm. And that's I mean, a pretty big job. Yeah, I know. And they didn't want to trust it with 18 year olds, which we let go to war. Ha <laughs> ha. But not drink. But not drink alcohol. Normal numerology meanings for number twenty uh, is war and peace. It's always like the two um, extremes, which I which is weird because I don't find Aquarius to be like that. But um, and of course you know twenty twenty, the year, no vision. Oh yeah, vision. Oh no, I personally do not know twenty twenty. <laughs> it means normal normal vision, not perfect vision. Do you know what it means? Normal vision at twenty feet. Yeah, so the two numbers, the one refers to what at what you're supposed to be able to see. Okay. And the other one refers to how far you see someone. So if you can read the board from 20 feet, then you have 20-20. Because what someone, normal person can read, see at 20, you can see at 20. Okay. If, what? so how does it go? So like 20-40 would be what a normal person can see at 20. You can see at 40. <laughs> so if, if you have 20-10... It's like, okay, so say I have 20-10 vision. What a normal person can see at 20 feet, I can see at 10 feet. So I have to be 10 feet closer to see it. I don't know. I don't know what the numbers are for 
poor vision. No, I don't either. I'm saying just that's generally yeah, how yeah. it is. I don't know which one goes first, which one goes second, but it the there's the standard and then there's the what you, the comparison. Right. I see t- at 10 feet what someone sees at 20 feet. And I saw that that's only for countries who use empirical language for numbers and otherwise it would be 66. I guess. Meter, meters? I don't know what feet people don't use feet in other countries. Oh, that's what empirical means. I guess. Um, and hindsight is 2020 meaning, meaning, well, we talked about it yesterday, right? Where I was talking about in the Bible, it's easier to see. I think (laughs) hindsight being 2020 is important to remember when reading the Bible because it gives you a whole new perspective on what it means to have faith, what it means to, um, believe and, and, and trust in God. Because when you're looking at it 2020, it, it all is easy. It's like, well, of course I would have followed Jesus. Of course I, I, I would have trusted in the Lord because, of course, if I was Solomon. Yeah. Of oh, course, yeah. if I was Solomon and God said, what, Knew do the you, end of the story. what do you want? I would have asked for wisdom and not money because, look, then I would have ended up with, with wisdom and money. It's like, well, yeah, because you see the whole story. Right. Now put yourself and you're, you're, you're just God says, what do you want? Would still then you have that energy to say wisdom like Solomon did? So I, I think so. That was tangent. Hindsight twenty twenty is when you have the whole story. Obviously, you can see the whole story clearly. But you, the, you know, the, the Monday morning quarterback. The Monday morning quarterback. This is what I would have done. Um, but yeah, knowing the whole, knowing the whole, the whole, the whole spiel. Story. We never say um, what all the YouTube channels say, which is subscribe, like, share, save. Uh, comment we never say it people say it is there a reason why we don't say it why we don't have the graphics why we don't um um it's been it's been over a year is this constructive criticism or are, no. you, are you asking or do you have an answer i was thinking of 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 um encouraging people to subscribe yeah if you if you come across the show uh just from um being recommended from somewhere else or if you always tune in but you realize i haven't subscribed yeah um because it encourages us because sometimes it's (laughs) sometimes we get really discouraged well we have a lot of computer malfunctions we have time restraints we have oh this this isn't the crimea river show we are doing great and we're enjoying this but i think what you're getting at is if you're watching and you enjoy it subscribe maybe you don't it's not a plea to if you're never going to watch our channel again. Just please subscribe. No. Give us something. No, it's, no, no. It's just a. Some oh, sort of thermometer. It's, do you is, know when you go to CVS every day and then they're like, can you just fill out the survey? Right. It's like you. I I know you said have a nice day and, and you liked me working behind the counter. I, I like you coming in. But there's other things that can we just on paper say. Right. That this is all working. But also if you like something at the store. And then, you know, one day you go in and it's not there anymore. And then you say, why don't you still sell those those um, chocolate bars? And you say, oh, well, we didn't even know people liked them. Are you threatening to leave? We might be the cho- missing chocolate bars. No, we will not be the missing chocolate. There might be one missing chocolate bar. Anyway, guys, more importantly than whatever nonsense you're getting on. Subscribe. It is Thursday, which is my favorite day of the week. Because we do a little thing called... Walk, Walk through, through Thursday. Thursday. I didn't roll say roll the intro. Spencer. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cause walk through Wednesday just begun. And we are back, guys. What is up? It is walk through Thursday, my favorite time of the year. And um after Wednesday. What? After Wednesday. No, after Friday. I thought you said um y- yesterday. That's why I'm saying it. Oh. And what we do here on Walk Through Thursday is we open up the Bible. The Bible is open. Look at it. Look at the Bible being all open. And once the Bible's open, we pick a verse from one of the many great books that the Bible has. And we read it and we try to break it down. This isn't telling you a whole Bible story. We might give a little background. We might not. This isn't about talking about huge overarching themes. This is about finding the power within one verse. And we do that slowly and surely. And we try to get a little bit more of a meaning out of it. 
Now, you may get different meaning than us, and that's okay because the Bible is the living word. But what's important is sometimes instead of just saying mantras, you look a little deeper. Anyway, with that being said, we are going to get into it. We're going to go sentence by sentence, line by line, word by word, letter by letter, syllable by syllable. And we are going to do this together forever. In English. In English. And if there's any numbers, it will be the empirical system. And it's American English. Actually, it won't be. What are like cubits? Oh. It'll be the biblical system. What's the original? What is the language? Greek? No, the language. No, it's the language that was in, um, remember that Mel Gibson movie? Braveheart? No. Passion of the Christ? Yeah. (laughs) You're just just emptying your brain (laughs) of words. Yeah, something... The, the, the language Jesus spoke that no we, one speaks. Yeah, which, like Hittite. Or he something. like looked it up. No, it wasn't even that. It was. But. You'll find it. Oh, it's right here. Ah, now you're putting it. Now I have to find it. Oh, I can find it for you right now. All right, today we're reading from Ezekiel. Ezekiel. I'm gonna name my future turtle Ezekiel. We never. <laughs> we never read from Ezekiel. Never do. Um, because Ezekiel has pages of. What you just said, cubits. Mm-hmm. It's going to be every single doorway, floor, room, um, stairs, <laughs> stairs. <laughs> and so you think there's nothing in here for me. This is this is a blueprint in in um in words. And what is the point? But we just grabbed a little something out of it. And also, let me little let me say something about that. I read the whole Bible, page to page. Ding! Page, page. We need a bell. <laughs> Page to page. Uh, beginning to end. Page after page. Beginning after beginning to end. Um, what's the word when you do something linearly? Conse- not consecutively. When you do something in order. Like, Consensually. No. Well, it, it was consensual, the, my Bible reading. But when you watch Star Wars and, oh, oh well, did you watch it for when it was released? Oh, yeah, or I know did, what you're did you watch it? Oh, my gosh. In order. Yeah. Of. Oh, you're killing me. Whatever. And when I was reading it, I was trying to get the whole message of the Bible. I, opposite of Walk Through Thursday, I wanted the whole thing. And there's a lot of books, you know, in they don't call it numbers, you know, the book of numbers for no reason. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of, it's just basically the Israelites. It, it, I'm not going to try it again. Numbering themselves. But I, even though it was in my head, not out of my mouth. I read every word. I didn't okay. skip if I'm like, okay, this is all just names. Yeah. Because for with the Bible, we say it's a living word and we say each word is powerful. Mm-hmm. And I find that there are levels to this. And even though I don't understand the yeah. point of reading these names and like looking at each letter, not glossing over them, is because I think every word has meaning. And even though, even if I'm not getting it physically, like, oh, that story is making me think something. I think there's an importance of it, even if I don't know it. Yep. 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 Good. Yep. 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 Okay. <laughs> Guppy. So we're reading the book of Ezekiel, and it is 47, 6 through 12. A long one. We're going to do a speed walk through this. Yeah. But I'll read it. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. And he said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from En Gedi to to Eglam. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither. Oh, okay. Nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. 
Sounds great. It does sound great. Is there any background we need for this? Well, the book is about, um, lit- you know, literally the book is about the destruction and exile of Judah and the promise of its eventual restoration. And so obviously this passage is talking about the restoration okay. and how it will no longer be a bad place, but a good place. And it'll be ruled by David or a righteous descendant of David. And they won't, um, they will be blessed. So that was the background of the literal. And like I said, the, the this is 47, 42, 43, 44. It's like, it's literally, you could give it to your construction, um, you know, contractor yeah. and he could build you exactly what or how the priests are supposed to act every single minute of the day but this little passage here i was attracted to because we always talk about um the the water of life yeah and the word of god and the um just the nourishment of the people's spiritual souls more than i find you know their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing um, I just take it more for your spiritual body than your um, physical body. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I, I was sorry. I was I was listening. I know to it was you. a I lot, was you, and you don't like to read it f- beforehand. I was just well, because you know, then it's cheating. It's not cheating. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I like this. So this is really is this talking about the river, the power yes. of the river? Yes, where it flows. Yes. And then eventually goes out into the Dead Sea. Right. If you read um, the passages before it, the, the verses before it, um, it, it, it starts as a trickle. Because this, yeah. this man is showing Ezekiel around and he's explaining, this is this will be here, this will be here. And for, it, it's like a trickle of water and then it gets wider and wider and wider. And at this point, yes, it's a river. And <clears throat> so he's talking to Ezekiel when he says, son of man, do you see this? So he's bringing his attention. Look at this river. And I'm going to tell you about the river now. Yeah. And then that's what we have. Okay. I like it. Um, I think we had a podcast about, was it the trees podcast? Oh, probably. And what we talked about is the roots underneath. Oh, and yeah. if, like, if it's by a river. Right. It's pulling in that water of life. Right. And I think this is the, like the same kind of comparison of. The closer you are to the river, it's like all these trees and and wherever the river is, the animals will gather. And even up until when it's flowing into the Dead Sea, the salty waters there become fresh. And it's like this idea of life and rejuvenation. And cleansing. And cleansing. That is, you can compare, I think, to God and living a spiritual life. And then there's one little bit where it's like... uh, but the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt, which is, you know, away from that this main river. Right. It's just that stagnant water. You can live because you have water, yeah. but it's it's not the, as fresh and flowing as you could have. Yeah. And then, yeah. Potential of. It is water. But yeah, I guess um, it's stagnant, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's the difference of what is a marsh. It's, it's not that flowing water. Right. And maybe it's it's about life, you know? Yeah, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm saying maybe that river is the path of life. Yeah. You know? You're gonna you're gonna end up in the Dead Sea. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. All right, let's just uh what do we got? We have some minutes. Um when I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on either side of the river. He said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down. Okay, he just names towns. Um, empties into the sea. The salty water becomes fresh. That's what you just said. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. Yeah. And everlasting life, um, abundant life, you know. And just always like well, the way I see it is, you know, God says like, let those who have ears hear. And I think a part of the, you know, that is all of the, you know, the animals and stuff know this river has life. And so there's always people that are go like it will God, no matter your what cup overflows, your river overflows, it will always attract mm-hmm. people, especially, you know, like if God be in love and stuff, it's like that river of love of God's love there, no matter where that is, when or where it'll attract right people. Um, swarms of living creatures will live. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. 
So where the river flows, everything will live. And I think that's a where well, God goes. Yeah, and and back. No to, one will die. And back to your cleansing analogy. Mm-hmm. It's, there is this salt water and stuff, but this river is cleansing. It's not just this river's good, that water's bad. Right. This water cleanses even the water that's not is right salty and stagnant. Yeah, you go in the in the in the uh, ocean, and it is refreshing. But you know you it. You are. You have to rinse off. Your you, yeah. the salt clings to you, and you can't drink salt water as well. No, Fishermen will stand along the shore. Um, they can spread their nets, and the fish will be of many kinds. And uh, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both sides. Fruit trees, not just any tree. It's a fruit. It's a tree producing um, food. And I found it interesting when it said every month they will bear fruit, because even though we're talking spiritually, it reminded me physically because every month a woman mm-hmm. can bear um, a child yeah not every month you know what i'm saying every month and i like that um about the fishermen because something about it you know if we're like saying like this river is like god and all that it's the asking you shall receive mm-hmm. like there's an abundant amount of fish right. that are all if you go out there every day you're going to get something and i think you know it's the difference of if you saw two fishermen, one of them casting a net in the Dead Sea, and it's like being like, why? I'm not getting anything. Right. Why? And it's like, because you're not in the right place. Right. And it's like, if you come to this river, there will be an abundance of fish. You know what's also interesting? As I as I told you, and you didn't have the benefit of seeing it beforehand, but I did, which was the passages before it. And as I told you, he's showing him where he wants him to build this temple, this sanctuary. It even says, because of the sanctuary, it flows to them. Where the sanctuary is built and it has all these rules and measurements, it's the water's trickling, trickling. And I told you, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. And as it gets further from the sanctuary, it's the widest and the largest. And it's now now, um, making everything fertile so far down. But because the trickle came from God, from from the sanctuary, from the holy place, because if if I was if I was doing the painting, I would think that the river should be widest at the temple uh, and smallest as far but, as it gets. You, but the alternative would be the smallest thing from God turns into the biggest thing, right? Like it's like well, that's what you're saying, just, and I just, and I yeah, okay, just a, a little trickle turns into life for an entire. Far-reaching, yeah. Far-reaching nation. What? Um, fruit trees every month. And that's what we said. The the fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. Um, what do you think about the word healing? I think I like it just because it... I think it's covering all the bases. Is right? Like we have cl- like the idea of cleansing. We have the idea of nourishing with um, the food. Right. Um, you know, life and then there's healing. And, and so... I also like it because it does throw in a little bit of that spirituality where it's like, it's, yeah, it, you're right. it's like saying like, wow, this sounds too good to be true for just a river. It's like right. the leaf to healing. No one will be hungry. And it's like, it's giving you these hints of it's all I need. Right. And it's like, should we all go find this river and just say that that was the point of this? Or is this river representing something more? Yeah. Yeah. Because to, if, to say healing means something needs to be fixed. Yeah. So... It's all. It's for. It's for everybody, even people who are broken or injured or, you know, wanting. A little salty, a little <laughs> salty, and a little cleansing. You know the river to go to. But guys, that is walk through Thursday. Thank you, Ezekiel. Thursday. Thank you, Ezekiel. Check it out. Go read Ezekiel. Go swim in a river. But we'll be back tomorrow for... Are we doing Dr. Seuss Friday tomorrow? Yeah, we are. For Dr. Seuss Friday. It's going to be a good one. Best. The best. What do we got? Five? I don't even know. Look at the playlist. Yeah, I don't know. We have, we, have a, we have a couple. They're adding up. Until then, um, go and live your best life. Peace.